OK, so in this video, I want to give you a very quick idea of how you can use equations in Topaz to set up your own models for data analysis, or perhaps even to refine some rather unusual parameters from powder diffraction data. So I want to pick up from the yttrium oxide example that we looked at in one of the earlier videos. And you might remember from that video that we one of the parameters that we were refining was a zero point correction for the diffractometer to describe the, the offset between the true two theta value of the diffractometer and the set point of the detector. And so we started off using a built-in topaz macro to refine that parameter. When, then we went through an example of how you could actually write a little topaz equation where you defined your own parameter called zero. You gave it a value and in topaz you wrote an equation that the two theta offset was equal to the value that parameter and you could refine that parameter. So that was a way of just repeating what one of the built-in macros in Topaz is all already doing. But you can very easily see that perhaps it might be that for your particular diffraction experiment, a simple linear offset in two theta isn't going to be sufficient to describe your data. So you could imagine uh, writing a slightly more complex example, like at the bottom of the screen here, where instead of just descri describing a parameter called zero, you have two extra parameters defined called core and core two and you could feed those into a simple polynomial expression which says to topaz the two theta offset is something times two theta squared plus something times two theta plus a constant and then these would be parameters that you can refine from your diffraction data to calibrate the experiment so that's a very straightforward example of something that you could do with equations you could think to yourself, well, I want to do something even even more wacky. You could say to yourself that um, you think for your particular diffraction experiment, for some reason, the two theta offset depends on the day of the week. So you could write a silly equation into your input file where you said that the two theta offset was equal to the zero point error plus some constant times the day of the week. And you could even imagine uh, setting things up so that the day of the week becomes a, a refinable quantity from root bulk refinement. Now that's a little bit of a, a silly, far-fetched example, but it's it's not too far-fetched. Um, one of the reasons that we used yttrium oxide for the, the test refinement we went through, the teaching refinement, is that yttrium oxide is a material that I quite often use uh, in root bulk refinement experiments. And it's not that I'm interested in yttrium oxide uh, for its own sake. The reason that we use yttrium oxide is that we do lots of experiments where we're looking at materials at high temperature. It might be materials in a furnace and a lab diffractometer, or it might be samples in real working chemical reactors that are operating at high temperatures. And when you're doing these um, non-standard experiments, these high temperature experiments, one of the problems is, is, is it's always very difficult to know what the true temperature of the sample is. You might have your furnace set to a, a certain temperature, but it may be that the sample itself is at a very different temperature. And what we actually do to get around that problem is we use yttrium oxide as an internal standard. So one of the things that's very well known about yttrium oxide from the literature is its thermal expansion. Very well known. So for example, I've got a little plot on the on the right here from the literature which shows the cell parameter of yttrium oxide as a function of temperature. And you can see now how you can use yttrium oxide as a calibrant. It might be that if you have yttrium oxide mixed into your sample, you refine a certain cell parameter. If you refine the cell parameter being 10.65 angstrom, you could read across and work out that the temperature is actually 900 Kelvin or so. In Topaz, you can actually go a stage further and you can actually set the temperature up so it's a refinable parameter. So if we take the data from the literature and over a small temperature range, we can approximate the thermal expansion by a simple linear equation. Here's the equation on the screen here. The cell parameter is something times the temperature plus a constant. Now, in reality, over wider temperature range, we have to use a slightly more complicated function, but this is good enough for this video. And then what we can actually say in Topaz is we could define, as I say, this parameter called the temperature. And we can say that the cell parameter should be given by something times temperature plus a constant. And if things are set up correctly, the temperature becomes a Rietveld refinable quantity. So let's just try doing that in a simple example. So what I've got here is the input file that we set up previously for doing this uh, Y203 Rietveld refinement. So let me just open that in JEdit. And so here's the input file that we had previously. Let me just send that to Topaz and let me launch Topaz. We'll just do the Rietveld refinement again, just to make sure we're getting the same R factor of about 14% or so. Yep, so here we go, 14.236%. And it's a, a nice Rietveld refinement with all the peaks calculated in the correct positions.
Okay, so if we were trying to set up the temperature as a refined um, parameter, then what we will do is instead of refining the cell parameter A, what we're going to do is we're going to define a new parameter called LPA. And we're going to say that the value of the cell parameter is equal to the equation that we've just looked at in the slides. And I'll put a, a semicolon colon zero at the end so that the value will get updated at the end of the refinement. So temperature is cell parameter is something times temperature plus a constant. We're going to need to define the temperature. So let's say parameter temperature 250. Now the cell parameter, instead of refining that freely, we're going to set that equal to the value of LPA that we've just calculated. Okay, so now we should be set up so that the cell parameter is determined by the temperature of the measurement. So if we get this right, if the temperature, the, the data is actually 300 Kelvin data. So if the temperature is too low, we should be predicting the cell parameter is too small. So the peak should all be shifted to a slightly high two theta value. If I go back to Topaz and I do a single a least squares iteration, it's telling me I've got a mistake. Let me just go back to my input file. And what did I get wrong? Ah, shouldn't have put the word A there. I should have put zero. So let me go back to Topaz, a single step. And can you see that my calculated peaks are shifted to slightly higher angle than they should be, meaning that the cell parameter is too small. So let me stop that. I won't update my file. Let me go back to the file. <laughs> Now let's try making the temperature say 350 degrees. So now the cell parameter should be calculated too, too large. And so if I do a single step, can you see the peaks are shifted to the left of where they ought to be? So because this is now a refinable parameter, if I step through the refinement one by one and then refine to convergence, what we should find is now the peak positions are in exactly the right places. If we go back to the Topaz input file, we'll see that the temperature of the sample is refined to 306 Kelvin. Okay, so um, you can probably with this method um, determine the temperature of your sample perhaps to within 5 or 10 degrees Kelvin. You do have to be very careful though. It will only work if you've got a good idea of all of the other factors that influence the, uh, the peak positions that you're observing in your experiment, particularly if things like the sample height are changing as a function of temperature or the position of the sample in the diffractometer is changing. You would need to take that into account. But provided you've got all of that uh, handled correctly, temperature becomes a quantity that you can extract from a Rietveld refinement. So there are lots of other tricks like this you can do with Topaz. And the real power comes from being able to write your own equations into the software and defining your own parameters to extract from the data. So hopefully that will give you some inspiration for doing your own types of unusual data analysis.